in today's kitchens, islands are very popular. In 2020, if you would like to place an island, you will first go to the wall section, and I like to use continuous. I'll click on continuous, simply move my cursor to the floor plan, and left click where I'd like to start drawing. So I'm going to choose right about this area here. We're just going to estimate to begin with, and I'm going to move my cursor, as always, in the direction that I want the wall to move, and I'll simply let go of the mouse and type in the length of the island. The island I'm going to place today, 54 inches in length. So I'll type in 54, hit enter. Now, we can continue to draw walls, but I really just wanted to have a straight island, so I will hit escape and stop drawing. Your island, once it's been placed, you can quickly move it around by holding your left button down on the, on the wall and simply moving it into place. Once you've placed it, we have to take a couple of things into consideration. Number one, because I drew a wall, 2020 automatically makes that wall 96 inches tall, if that's your default setting you need to adjust that. So we will right click, and as always, when we want to change a wall, we'll go to properties. When we choose properties, we have a couple of options for this island. First of all, you could have created an island where you're simply going to place a couple cabinets on the inside. You see the placement zone over here, and they're going to face the opposite wall. And maybe you're going to do a built-up bar top on the wall here, and we're just going to need to make that wall 40 and a half inches tall. Well, if that's the case, we'll come over to height, we will highlight the height of the wall, and we will type in 40.5, and we would click OK and start finishing, uh, start drawing our island. Now, once uh, we do that, we can place our cabinets, countertops, do all the rest. But let's say that this is a more traditional island. You're going to place just a couple cabinets here and maybe put a panel on the back. You don't need that wall. How would you make that adjustment? It's pretty simple. Where it says thickness right here, We'll highlight the thickness of the wall, and we'll type in zero. Now watch what happens when I click apply. And again, I'm choosing apply because apply makes the change but leaves the menu open. When I typed in zero, if you look at my screen, the wall itself disappeared. And if I go back to my wall properties menu and choose type, you also notice that the type of wall changed from a solid wall to what we call a construction line. It basically creates a space, the workspace for the cabinets, your placement zone, and there really isn't a wall that'll be visible if we do a view. The other option you have, or the other decision that you need to make, is do you want to place cabinets in just one area, or would you maybe like to put a panel or other cabinets on the upper other side, making this a double-sided wall? Very simple to do, where it says placement zone, all you have to do is put a check mark next to outside, and if you look right here on my floor plan, you'll see that I now have boundary lines both inside and outside. I'll click OK to confirm, and if I zoom in just for a moment, I'm zooming in by rolling my wheel forward on the island. To demonstrate the island, let me come over here and drag a cabinet over. So I'll choose a base 30. I'm going to drag and drop it to the top side, and let's just center this for right now. And I'm going to grab another base 30, but instead of dropping it in the placement zone on the top, I'm going to drop it into the lower placement zone. And when I do so, and I slide these over, you will see that the cabinets are back to back. I do need to adjust these dimensions a little bit, but you will see that my cabinets are now back to back. Now you have an island.